We've done other videos now with JC, who's going to join us in this video as well, where we've talked about sizing of ductwork and, and different ins and outs of that. And we're gonna go one step further now because there is a method to the madness here, right? And ACA will break it down into multiple manuals, if you will. So if I were to give this video an affectionate title, we're gonna stay bird's eye view on something called manual T. It's essentially the ins and outs of the supply vents and making sure they are sized and laid out properly. So we're gonna get back with JC once again. Thank you to JC for joining us. Let's dive into it. We've done a few videos. We've sized returns and filter grills and the supply. So now we're looking at the sizing of the supply grills and the ins and outs of that. Some affectionately call it manual T. Yes. Let's start from the beginning there before we get to the table, I guess. Like what's the thought process here? Well, the thought process is when you supply a grill for a home, you want to make sure that you're going to be able to deliver the CFM that's coming out of the duct into the room. And you don't want the grill to be a restriction. But the grill is always a restriction already and it should already be a part of your duct calculation. So we have things like throw and velocity, and we're gonna demystify a little bit of that today. And so we've got a grill data sheet that we're gonna look at here on a couple grills. If you look at the chart, so right across the top in bold, you'll see size in inches in the amount of area. But next to that, you have that's face velocity. And generally when I design gr with for grills, I try to stay within that five to 700 face velocity because anything, anything over that you start getting noise. Got it. But so this six by six grill, you know, anywhere between 70 and you see there, it says CFM right under that. So around, you know, 85 CFM, you're just a little over 600 face velocity. And then your pressure drop across that grill is 0 0.039, but you've got 7.7 .7 feet of throw. So this might be closer to, you know, a little bit closer to eight feet of throw at just a little bit over. Basically throw is how far the air is going to be thrown across the room. And then the pressure drop, the 0 0.039, is the number that I would try to average for all of my grills into my uh, static pressure drop across my furnace or my air conditioning system. And then, you know, CFM is, you know, basically 84, 85 CFM is how much this one grill is going to put out. So if a contractor's laying out a house, they're going to use this chart based on the size of, you know, the ducts that are supplied to that room, they're going to go to this chart and say, okay, I need to figure out what size I need to install on the end of this duct. So that way I'm, I'm getting what I need. I need to get proper airflow and so on. Yeah. So you can use this to size. So the grill and the boot size are kind of, kind of uh, go together. So you know, if you only, if you know you need a hundred CFM and you know that that you can do that with a six by six grill, so then you can do it with a six by six boot. Is it going to be a six by six by seven or is it going to be a six by six by six? Nobody should be using the six by six by six boot because there's a lot of, that's just, it's just a very low amount of air. You know, if a contractor wants to look up this data where can they find a chart like this for the products that they're buying? Is this on most websites for the grill manufacturers? Yes, Airmate. This is this is an Airmate uh, grill, mm -hmm. and it is a random Airmate grill. I'm not sure we use this one. It's the ceiling four-way grill. So yes, you go to Airmate, and then you uh, pick out the grill that you're going to use, and then you find that in the information, and that's where you find that grill, and you find that chart for that grill, and that's the one you use. So Airmate, Selkirk, they both have charts out there available, and those are the most two. Those, those are the two most common ones. So, and they have great. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but you know the grill manufacturers are 
really doing their best to uh, make grills a lot better than they used to be and they also have more options we've got plastic grill grills now we have you know stuff that's a lot easier to clean the paint is better the grill manufacturers are really stepping up their game in the last five years or so i didn't know that so that's good to know so some folks like want hypoallergenic stuff in their house mm -hmm. and so they want stuff that they can pull down and throw in the dishwasher you're not going to want to do that with a metal grill, but with the plastic grills, you can do that. Oh yeah. That's interesting. I'll put a link to this in the description of this video where we found this actual, so the submittals and performance data sheet on Airmates website, but whatever the manufacturer is, go to their website in most cases or contact them if you're not seeing it directly on their website and they should be able to provide this information to you. If they are not providing that information to you, then maybe we want to look elsewhere before we purchase those grills when you're when you're uh, choosing grills make sure you stay between that five and seven hundred face velocity or you're going to get noise unless your customer wants noise you can go a little higher but it all depends on the comfort of your customer always talk to your customer as you're going through des the design because you can make certain decisions that will make it louder or quieter or blow air on them when they don't want it to blow on them uh, those are the important things. It's always keep your customer in what they want because the more times you ask them, hey, what do you want? Do you like the look of this grill better or do you like this grill better? You know, give them choices. They love them and they'll they'll love you more for giving them the choices. So that's it, guys. In a nutshell, we're going to do more videos to come on even more stuff such as sizing, selecting the right equipment and the ins and outs of that. So stay tuned. Keep following our channel for more in-depth knowledge. JC, thank you again. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you watch this video, let me know down in the comments section. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we get into the nitty gritty of sizing the supply duct correctly. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for more HVAC tips. We'll see you next time.